Okay, uh, as you already know, I'm Paul Tihemir from Virtuosa. Um, and I want to talk about mounts. First, I will recall uh, all the propagation problems a little bit uh, from the previous presentation in on LPC last year. Uh, then I will talk about one another problem which deemed important for me, uh, but was not included in the previous talk. Uh, I also shared it when uh, sent uh, letters to uh, kernel uh, mailing lists. Uh, and then I will talk about kernel patch status and uh, probably most important, what we do next. Uh, okay, let's recall what were the problems. Uh, <clears throat> first thing to mention is that Creo doesn't know anything about the history of creation of resources. So we always uh, need to um, we always see the final snapshot and need to reinvent the history, uh, the sequence which will lead to the same resource state um, after we restore it. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> with only inherited mount sharings, we uh, have multiple tricky configurations uh, which are hard to understand how to restore them. Uh, you always need to think how to create access, how to not, not to create access mount, not to break the tree of mounts which you already have, not to lose the control over some mounts um, we are ever over mounts. Uh, need to always think how to put it all together in the right order. Uh, all those problems were discussed on uh, my previous talk. Here's the link on the last slide. Uh, okay, next. Uh, so, the new one, new problem is the order inversion. Uh, here is the mount info-like uh, table, which shows uh, four mounts. Uh, you can see this first mount, I mean 100 first, 101, uh, is from the last uh, shared group. It can actually happen, here is the bash script, which can create such a configuration. Uh, and you can see on the right uh, the picture of it. Um, the tricky thing is that uh, you need to uh, create uh, to create uh, the mount which is the ancestor of all other mounts. You need previously to create all other uh, shared groups before. Uh, it uh, creates another restriction on the order of creation of mounts, which affects Creo uh, directly. Uh, and you can see the GIF on the right, but it doesn't download, <laughs> sad. Mm, uh, I probably will send it uh, somewhere along with the presentation. Uh, the GIF should have illustrated that you need to create many mounts and do many on mounts to actually create this setup with old mount API. Uh, so yeah, we need to simplify mount API of creation of uh, propagations. Uh, I mean sharing groups. Um, and let's go to the kernel patch status. Uh, actually, the original uh, patch was sent in uh, two, 2000, uh, um, oh, sorry. I forgot, <laughs> just a second. Um, it was in 2017 by Andre Wagging. Uh, and uh, we, since then, we were facing a lot of problems in virtuoso container migration uh, related to propagation uh, problems like new mounts are created, extra mounts are created, which were, shouldn't be there or some mounts disappearing after migration. That is sad. Uh, and it was a big pain for us, so we tried several heuristic uh, approaches, like adding some uh, checks if we need to do something, or uh, if we need to set sharing, or probably set some uh, uh, mounts to slave. Uh, but that, this, that doesn't work because it was not general solution. It only helped in simple cases of our customers. So uh, Andre uh, helped a lot. Uh, and uh, for me to make actually uh, uh, 
another approach uh, where we use his original kernel patch and on top of it create the new mount engine which is much simpler than the first one and actually covers almost all the cases of propagation. I mean, all the cases of propagation, but some uh, features still in to do, uh, you will see them on the last slides. Um, so, <clears throat> Uh, I need to say big thanks to uh, Christine for pushing this to mainstream uh, and to Andre for helping a lot with review uh, and supporting this series. Um, so, yeah, it got to mainstream uh, like last month uh, and uh, hope it would get into uh, 5.15 version. Um, okay. So the API is quite simple. We just reuse uh, the mount move syscall, adding one extra flag, which uh, changes the behavior to actually copy sharing instead of moving mounts. Uh, so we need, don't need to uh, change anything in old mount API, that's good. Uh, we also get uh, cool new features of sysMoveMount uh, syscall. Uh, we can resolve paths at FDs. We can uh, stop resolving at uh, symbolic links. Uh, that helps a lot. Uh, current Mount V2 uh, implementation still doesn't use those features, but it would simplify quite much uh, when we do. Uh, also, we did uh, extra security uh, changes uh, from the original patch. Uh, we added a check that uh, mounts can be accessed only by mount points. Uh, I mean, uh, the destination and the source mounts both. Also, we checked that uh, we can't copy the sharing from the narrow root mount. Uh, we also can't copy sharing from the mount with locked children, which cover the root of destination mount. Uh, generally, it means that we prohibit uh, uh, getting uh, more propagation than the user can actually see at this point. We don't give additional ones. Uh, so I prepared a crew uh, uh, port. Uh, of uh, our virtuoso version of Mount V2 algorithm, uh, and it actually works, but with small restrictions that it doesn't pass all tests for username space flavor, it doesn't go well, but uh, in virtuoso we pass those tests. So we need to port something more, but it was a draft uh, proof of concept uh, uh, port yet. We will do a full, uh, full uh, port in future. Uh, so, some more things, uh, some more key things I need to highlight here, that we still uh, allow, uh, like it was in the original uh, kernel patch from Andre, uh, to copy sharing between mounts in different mount namespaces, it means uh, cross namespace uh, sharing copy. Uh, that's uh, That can be done uh, even if we prohibit this, we can still copy cross namespace because there are cross namespace bind mounts now. Uh, you can see um, here uh, the sequence of calls which would lead uh, to cross namespace sharing if we prohibit it but still use uh, cross namespace bind mount. Uh, but it creates extra mount namespace, abstract mount namespace, and extra mounts. So let's save uh, some resources here and don't do it. Let's allow the direct uh, sharing copy. Uh, it doesn't seem a security issue. We check uh, that both mount namespaces uh, between which we copy the sharing uh, allow modification for current user. So we have CAPSIS admin in both owner username spaces. Uh, also, there is a difference in uh, checks between uh, actual move mount and move mount with our uh, special set group flag. We uh, don't 
actually move mounts. We only copy sharing. So we skip all checks which are related to mount move. Like we don't need to uh, check if it's uh, if it has lock mounts on top or something like that. Um, actually, we check it, but in different contexts. Uh, I showed it on the previous slide. Uh, also, due to namespace lock, we don't race with any propagation. So there is no situation there in the middle of propagation, some mount will change uh, sharing group. Uh, and also need to state clear that um, we don't create new mounts, we don't um, actually change the sharing group tree. So <clears throat> there should be no loops created by this new feature. Um, we should be safe. Uh, okay, next slide. Uh, what we want to do next? First is simple. We want to fix all ZDTM uh, zero downtime migration tests. Uh, we want to uh, handle some uh, complications which occurred uh, during the switch to mount move. Uh, we need to, for example, for external mounts, we need to find the actual mount point on host, uh, then recreating the mounts of container because we prohibited to access uh, by subdirectories. We only can access mounts by mount points. Uh, we need to surely reuse cool features of Moon Mount Cisco. We need to um, <clears throat> copy only from the bigger mount with full file system root, for example. Uh, we shouldn't copy from the uh, smaller uh, thinner mount to the wider one. Uh, yeah, that should be fixed properly. Um, but I think it wouldn't be so hard, actually. Uh, so yeah, one other thing we need to not to forget to document the new API. It's not yet done, but I hope in the near future I will do it. Uh, here are more complex ideas, what to do next. Um, they some some of them actually include uh, the problems I stated on the last LPC uh, talk uh, last year. Uh, for example, we need some interface to get uh, namespace tag of uh, mount uh, because uh, like proc uh, is uh, connected with its pid namespace. NFS with network namespace. We need to get this information simple. So we need some interface here. Um, also, there's problem of Unix socket bind mounts. Um, Unix sockets actually uh, have a file on the file system. We have a FD through which we send pockets and we have a file uh, which can be actually opened with special IOCTL. And we need to restore that information right because the user can open this file and after checkpoint restore check if it's still the same file if it's reopened. Um, so I think we would need uh, something like cross namespace bind mounts during the mount restore uh, to solve it. Currently Creu um, creates mounts in all mounts for all namespaces in one single uh, service namespace, service mount namespace, and only then copies namespaces uh, and uh, puts only required mount in them and does pivot root to rip out everything else. Um, so probably we should change it to something more dynamic like just creating cross namespace bind mount with new mount API. Um, also, there is a problem that some mounts due to user namespaces and cloning, uh, copying mount namespaces inside the container can be locked. Uh, and probably the user doesn't want it to change to be unlocked after migration, but currently it uh, happens actually. Um, that can be a security problem, so we need to have some interface to actually 
comfortably uh, change the locked status of the mount, making it locked at least. Probably we can't unlock it. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, we need something here. Uh, other problems are probably uh, should be solved in Creo. Uh, we need to handle files on detached mounts. We already have uh, some uh, work on it uh, for NSFS mounts. Uh, we would do it. Uh, we need uh, to handle nested user namespaces somehow. Probably the same thing for as for user sockets would work. Just creating all namespaces by cross namespace bind mounts from the clear namespace. Um, also, we uh, still have a problem with overmounted uh, slash in namespaces. Uh, there is still uh, not so easy to um, get all mounts for it. Probably some hooks in eBBF can solve it. Um, Alexander Mikalitsin would probably say much about it in his uh, speech. Uh, so, and uh, the last thing, uh, <clears throat> we need to uh, open overmounted files actually. We've prepared all this mount engine, uh, but we don't open uh, files which are on hidden mounts. But we can already as we have, as you can uh, check in my previous presentation last year, already all infrastructure for it. Uh, we already tried some uh, some part of it in Virtuosa and it works. So we will do it uh, in mainstream crew too. Uh, here are links, thanks a lot for listening. Uh, probably you have some more ideas on this one um, and probably more problems. Uh, here, um, please tell if you have. Has the new mount engine already uh, landed in Creo? I, I sorry. No, I not talking. yet. Sorry, I waited for the kernel patch yes, to land in mainstream. Sure. Um, I once a while ago I had a patch to uh, use NSFS to get. Um, to get the information that you were talking about, like for example, uh, uh, get the namespace uh, namespace tag of a particular resource um, via the IOCL interface that we already have in NSFS. Yeah, for NSFS, it's quite yeah quite good example. Uh, we actually use this IOCL in Creo already to get the namespace tag of another namespace. So we can adopt it to get the namespace tag of a file system. <laughs> oh, either that or whatever the information for reading mount options in mount v v v2 is. Um, you know, that should exist. It's supposed to be there. I, I, I haven't looked at that code lately. Uh, uh, for PROC, uh, probably I'm not uh, understanding the question. Do you ask about the, uh, this thing, uh, the mount yes. tag? Yeah. Uh, for PROC, it is uh, easy to get this information because there are uh, like links on uh, <clears throat> uh, PROC uh, PID1 uh, uh, and you can understand from the uh, from this link uh, to which process you actually uh, which process is the init of the PID namespace so you can understand that okay this uh, process is for this PID namespace then it's pro this PROC is for this PID namespace but it's hard. It would be easier if you have like general interface to get for any file system the tag. Yeah, um, there should be an interface part at least, and there was at least in the design um, for mount v2 to read back all the information you need to mount a file system um, the way it's currently mounted. Um, and if that doesn't exist, that's probably what, what, where the work should be put. Um, okay, I will check it. Yeah, I didn't find it yet, but probably it's still there.
that's David's patch set. It's, that's uh, part of should be part of FS info. Yeah, it didn't get to mainstream. I think not yet. Ah. Yes. Okay. Okay, I think I should mute myself when I'm talking. Um, I think that should be it for now. Um, uh, we can have two minutes to prepare the next uh, presentation. So if we uh, run into any issues, we can sort them out. So Papo, thank you very much for the talk. Thanks a lot. Interesting.